Hey there, welcome back to another one of my videos. Today's video is gonna be on trying to solve the brake shake issue with the Kia Stinger. Some people say that the rotors are warped. Some people say the pads deflect deposits on the rotors, causing it to shake when they heat up. Some say it's the rotors and the pads. I'm not sure. So I'm gonna to try to fix it the cheapest way possible. And the cheapest way possible is cleaning the rotors and putting new pads on. Now the pads I chose to use were gonna be Stop Tech from K8 Stinger Store. The K8 Stinger Store informed me that they are back ordered right now with Stop Tech. So they sent me another set of pads that they say are better. I'm not even sure the make of the pads. So let's open the box. I just got them and see what pads they are. So it looks like uh, Evolution pads by Power Stop. We got front pads in here. So these are gonna be the pads we are gonna go with. They say they are a ceramic pad. I don't know if that's the case. I paid about $130 for these pads US. Kate Stinger store shipped them right up, DHL, took about three days. They do not have these pads listed on their website. So I will leave a link to their email. I paid for these pads 100%. I'm not sponsored or affiliated with them. So I'm just trying to help them out. If the pads are good, I'll let you know. If the pads are bad, I'll also let you know. Well, let's get into putting on these brake pads and then doing the bedding procedure. Now these pads recommend for the bedding procedure, it says on the box here, they're rec recommending 30 decelerations from 30 miles per hour to five miles per hour. So they want you to do that 30 times leaving 30 seconds in between each time you do it. So that's good to know. So once I get them installed, I'll take it out and I will bed the brakes. I'll show you guys the process. Time to jack this car up. So on these pads, if you look close right here, you'll see a pin. Right there, you'll see a pin. On the back side here, you're just gonna basically, there's no retaining clip on these pins. You're just gonna wanna softly tap them out with a little punch. And then your retaining clip on the front side here will just pop out and the pads will slide out. So I'm gonna get into it and tap them out. You want to take some pliers and try to get this back side out there you go there's one pin just gonna to want to set that aside and not lose it this retaining clip will now just slide out here sorry if my hands are in the way oops there we go there's our other pin there's our other retaining clip and now to pull out the brake pads so to pull out these brake pads we'll see if they will slide out, which they probably won't, so I'll probably have to just slowly pry them out. One out. Junk. Who can agree? Comment below. There's the other one out. Worst pads ever. All right, so to push back the, uh, the piston, slip your brake back in there and just kind of pot, pull back like this. Since you're not using this brake pad ever again, I sure wouldn't ever use it again. This side, pop it in there and just, you can actually feel them going back. So it's pushing the brake fluid back up into the reservoir there. That should be good. Get my brake pads and then uh, I'll put some grease on the back of them, some backing plates and try to slip them in. All right, new pads are in. So now we're just gonna line up the little holes on the pads. They look similar to those holes, as you can see. And we're gonna get the pin started. Remember, we gotta slip through that. We just wanna make sure that pin goes through the pad. I'm 
I'm just trying to be delicate here so I don't scratch these beautifully painted brakes. You want that pin over top of that retaining clip, like so. See how that pins over top of it, holding it down? You definitely want to do that. So just uh, my pins are all lined up in the holes. They're in the holes of the new pads for holding my retaining clip down. So you're just going to want to tap your pins back in. I'm going to look. Maybe just use my punch so I don't chip my paint. A little tight in here. On the back side there, I just made the pins flush. So if you see, those pins are now flush, sticking out just a little bit there. And that's it. Out with the junk pads, in with the new. If you notice, I have a plank underneath my car here. The reason is I run the Stinger House side winglets, so I had to get the car up a little higher so I can get under to my jacking point. If you're not sure where the jacking point is, I have a video on my wheel spacers I'll put up in the corner there, and it shows you where your brake jacking point is. Just gonna clean off my drum in case there's any deposits. Of course, I ran out of brake clean for this video, but I'm using rubbing alcohol. And I'm gonna clean them the best I can. I'm actually gonna clean my caliper too since I have the tire off. What better chance to clean these beautiful calipers? The reason I'm leaning towards it being brake pads over warped rotors is for the fact that it only does it sometimes. In my head, if the rotors were warped, I would think that you'd have a vibration all the time. Um, comment below, let me know. I could be completely out to lunch. I'm definitely not a mechanic. I'm mechanically inclined, but I learn a lot from you guys in the comments. So definitely comment below and let me know what you think, what your thoughts are. If you think this is gonna work or not work, but I wanted to provide an option for a cheap fix for guys out there on a budget. And this is option number one, replace your front brake pads and we'll see where that gets us. Here's a quick comparison of, that would be the factory brake pad. That would be our new brake pad. Just the composite material looks different. So we'll see if it performs differently. I'm gonna go around to the other side now and get the other side completed. It's the exact same process as this side. All right, front pads are installed. That was easy. All in all, it'll probably take about a half hour to 45 minutes, including your jack up time. You might ask, well, why are you just installing front pads? Front pads I'm installing because the front does about 75 to 80% of your braking. The back pads probably wouldn't even notice. And my other reason is I'm trying to fix this for the cheapest way possible. So anybody out there that doesn't want to do brake pads and rotors and the whole nine yards can possibly, we'll see if it works, just exchange their front pads out for a quality pad and solve the problem if the dealership won't help you. Cause I know my dealership, when I asked them about it, they're like, we never heard of this. I said, well, go on any forum about it because there is a lot of them. Anyway, let's get into the car and get the bedding process started. So one other important step before you drive anywhere, start your car, pump up your brake pedal. You're gonna notice you have no brake pedal because you push those pistons in the caliper back. So you wanna pump, pump it up until you have solid brake again. All right, we're in the car here. We're gonna start the bedding process. The bedding process for these brakes is get up to 30 miles an hour, decelerate to five miles an hour, just like this. And now allow 30 seconds to cool and do that same process over for 30 times. I'm not going to do that with you because I know you'll just fast forward through it and it's probably pretty boring. Once I'm done bedding the brakes, I am going to get on the highway. I'm going to get up to speed. I'm going to apply 
brake pressure like I normally do and see if the front brakes heat up and stop shaking. Bedding process is done, just jumping on the highway here. Gonna get these brakes hot and see if the shake is stopped. I'll just keep pressing the pedal, kind of riding the brakes a bit, heat them up. Don't feel anything yet, but I haven't really got a good hard application going downhill. I'm applying them, not feeling a vibration. Let's get some speed here and try it. Uh, felt pretty good. My old brake pads would definitely be vibrating. There is a slight little vibration. It's very slight though. The old brake pads, the steering wheel used to shake quite a bit. Like it was very noticeable. This one, I really have to pay attention to notice anything. And mind you, my brakes are really hot right now. So I don't know if there's a temperature threshold. All right, let's get some speed and do some hard braking. Yeah, they're feeling pretty good. Definitely an improvement. And they're hot right now too. We'll try it one more time here. We've got a nice little downhill coming up here. Pick up some nice speed. I know for a fact, every time I came down this hill, my brakes would always vibrate, but the steering wheel's feeling good. Brake fluid's getting hot. I can tell I've been doing some pretty hard braking for a while now. So we'll leave it at that. So that's gonna wrap up the video on the brake pad installation. I did some more driving and medium to hard braking off camera and the brake shake was gone. I did extreme braking on camera there where I had the brakes actually smoking at one point. That braking I would never do with this car under any circumstances that I could think of. I was on the brakes every two, three seconds. I got these brake pads from Dave at the K8 Stinger store. I will link his email in my description. I have to say the customer service there is great. He actually reached out to me and phoned me and gave me some tips on the brake pads. So if you're thinking about just swapping out your brake pads to get rid of the shake, you want to do a cheap fix, get a hold of him. He will definitely help you out. All right, until next time.